Welcome. Going carnivore in Thailand here. Woke up this morning at 6 a.m. and it was pouring rain. I mean, wind was making the palm trees lean and the rain was coming six feet underneath the uh, awning that we've got the roof that goes over the porch. It was coming in six feet, just absolutely pouring for about, I'd say an hour and 45 minutes. And now the sun's out. Let me tilt this up a little bit. Sky looks nice. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful here. But on the carnivore issue, I want to, talk about sugar addiction just a little bit more yesterday we stopped at harlan's restaurant off of central patia road in patia and harlan's an interesting guy he owned about 11 restaurants in hong kong for a long time and when the politics in Hong Kong started taking a turn for the worst, I guess, I'm just supposing this because I didn't ask him. He sold all his restaurants in Hong Kong and now he operates this restaurant in Pattaya. And he's a hardworking guy. He runs it himself, cooks all the meals himself. I mean, he's behind the, the, the kitchen making this fabulous food. I mean, this is, this is an underestimated restaurant. I mean, he's not pumping out ordinary cuisine. He's pumping out some really neat stuff. But when I spoke to him, he's been in, he's been out of the United States for 28 years. I think he said Harlan's restaurant it's in Welcome Town, which is a little side area where some shops are. And that that comes right off Central Pottia Road if you're from around here. If you're not what I'm what I'm getting to here is in Thailand this is so called the off rainy season. Okay, and a lot of people make a lot of, a lot of big thing about oh I want to come to Thailand during the during the uh, high season. Well, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Where it's where it's not rainy, it's dry. But here in the rainy season, for the most part, you either get rain in the morning for a couple of hours, and then the sun comes out. Uh, and beautiful, or you get rain in the afternoon or in the sun, you know, was beautiful all day. There's a few times when you do get rain all day long, just a good soaking rain. But hell, you get that in Ohio. I mean, you know, occasionally. But what I'm getting to here is that if you come to Thailand during the off season, you're going to get fewer tourists. Uh, it's going to be less crowded. The pricing for lodging is going to be lower. It's going to be a great place to come and you can do carnivore here, even in the restaurants. Uh, he had some excellent carnivore dishes. Uh, the shrimp and the and the terrazzo sausage, unbelievably good. But back to the sugar addiction. I had that dessert yesterday and it had those chocolate, melted chocolate filled pastry balls. But the pastry was only, it was really amazing. It, it, it was like the shell of an egg. I mean, as soon as you cracked it, you saw it's only, it only had the thickness of an eggshell. And it was hard like an eggshell. And when it cracked, there was all this chocolate inside, which went with the little one scoop of 
some sort of vanilla type ice cream. And I had that, and that was my first, I guess, real big thing of sugar that I have done. So, all right, back to this sugar thing here. The amazing part about it was last night when I got home, I wasn't very full because we, we both split that one entree and it wasn't that big of an entree. But I wasn't in the mood for a whole steak. So we took some uh, middle, middle chicken wings out and just put them in the air fryer and crisped them all up in there and they were delicious. A few little chicken wings. But I had this craving like I, wow, I really want ice cream or, I, I didn't give in, but it's amazing. It's like a crack junkie who's been off a of crack for four months and somebody, yeah, you know, said take a hit of this and all they wanted was another hit of this. It is absolutely incredible how addictive that sugar is and you know I mean I guess it can be said by some that you know in very small quantities it won't kill you even if you're even if you do very well on carnivore uh, but it's it's just grabs you it is such an addictive thing. Anyway, if you feel the same way or if, you, if you're you able better to control it, leave me a comment down below. It will uh, it'll let me know. But yeah, the whole point of this channel is just talk about what you feel and what you're doing, you know. Are you, are you really making it or not making it? It's tough. I think you go through ebbs and flows of where it's real easy and where it's real, where it's not. But even though I broke ranks and cheated yesterday, sometimes you just have to say, you know, Do what you want, when you want, and how you want. And if that's what you want, then go ahead and do it because what the hell else you here for? Sooner or later, we're all going to die. So, yeah. I used to always try to handle my problems in life by asking the one question. And this is a little tidbit from Hannah here. I used to ask myself a question when I had a problem in business or finance or personal relationships or anything else. I'd always ask the, the question to myself, regardless of how this turns out five years from now, will it matter? Will I even remember it? Will, I, will it make a difference five years from now? Let's say you, you go to the mailbox, you get a letter from the Internal Revenue Service in the United States saying, we'd like to audit your tax returns from four years ago and three years ago. Wow, that's a terrible letter to get. Nobody wants to go through the headache and the hassle of an audit. Nobody wants to prove to the United States government that everything they said on their tax return was legal and honest and that they didn't omit anything and everything was A-OK -okay right. So that really becomes a major problem. And when I was younger, that I would have stewed on that problem and been upset about that problem 
for several days. But as I grew older and I took a little bit out of the stoic philosophy, I just asked myself, five years from now, will this matter? Would be long forgotten. Yeah, you know, I, got, I had this on it, you know, back in 2007, I was audited. That's just making things up. Will it matter in 2015 or 2012 or 2024? If you answer that question, probably not. Probably isn't going to make a bit of difference. The small amount of problem it was and the hassle it will cause. You can say that. Well, it becomes easier to deal with. Everything becomes easier to deal with when you realize how little it will mean in five years. Now, how does this, how does this matter with going carnivore? Well, maybe the one dessert won't mean a thing in five years. But falling off the wagon entirely and starting to eat pizza or you know, the, starting to eat a lot of uh, papaya salads and uh, a lot of beans and potatoes and things along with your ribeye. You have to ask yourself, will this mean something in five years? And the answer is, yeah, if you fall off the wagon, it's going to mean you're still fat five years from now or fatter than you are now. Uh, you're going to gain weight. You're not going to feel as good. You're going to be tired. It's, it's going to matter not only five years from now, but it's going to matter five hours from now. When you feel tired and you feel hungry again from eating them carbohydrates. So how we solve life's problems also ought to be handled with how would affect the, your longer term future. Wouldn't we be better if more people in our government actually said, how will this affect the future five years from now, 10 years from now? What will this be thought of 10 years from now? I don't think anybody asks those questions. They just bitch and complain and not care about the long-term consequences. It, you know, from a young age, a lot of people were raised not to think long-term. It goes back to someone conducted a study a long time ago where if you went into a room, and I'll tell you, I think this was on Candid Camera at one time, if anybody remembers that show. They would go into a room with a young six-year-old child, boy or girl, and they would have the most delicious-looking dessert, but a very small dessert. And they would tell the the kid, look, you can have this one dessert now, or we, if you wait 15, 20 minutes and not touch that dessert, we'll bring you in a tray of a half a dozen desserts, which you can eat any or all of them, but you can't touch this one for 20 minutes. Some kids didn't last 20 seconds for it was instant gratification of that little cupcake or dessert that they were given. And some kids said, you know, I'll wait the 20 minutes 
for to get something better. And uh, the ones that wait the 20 minutes, I gotta bet that they were more successful in life as they grew up. Because instant gratification often leads to bad long-term results. That's my rant for the day. Thanks for listening. That's all, folks.